This is Florine, a young mother living and working in Amsterdam. Like many of her fellow Amsterdamers, she cycles to get around. The Dutch love their bicycles. Florine uses a cargo bike to take the children along. In town, cycling is both cleaner and faster than a car. Even though Amsterdam has a reputation for being the cycling capital of the world, with its long stretches of bike lanes, the city's air is rather dirty. Like in many other European cities, car exhaust fumes are a serious health threat, with particulate matter being especially harmful. And the smaller the particles, the more dangerous they become. The tiniest particles are up to 500 times thinner than a strand of hair. These are called ultrafine particles and can enter deep into your lungs and blood circulation. They can cause cancer and other cardiovascular and lung diseases. Ultrafine particle levels are not yet monitored or regulated in Europe. That's why Friends of the Earth Netherlands set out to measure the amount of ultrafine particles together with volunteers like Florine. This afternoon, Florine is cycling into town with her two little girls in the tub of her cargo bike. See that purple chart? It shows the amount of ultrafine particles in the air, and it's already going up. She's approaching a busy street. These cars here are waiting at a red light. Florine and the kids are exposed to high levels of ultrafine particles. In a bit, you'll see a big green truck causing this peak of 185,000 parts per cubic centimeter, a carcinogenic fume of diesel soot. The measuring device carried by Florine is very sensitive, which makes it possible to identify specific polluters on a drive-by basis. At this subway station, she's taking a right. There is less traffic here, but this two-stroke scooter and that red bus cause another local high. Yeah, Odili, sitting in the tub, is demanding cleaner air too. And she's right. Here we're crossing one of Amsterdam's many canals. There's less traffic right now, more space between the buildings, and there's a nice breeze diluting the pollution. Some cleaner air at last. Protected bike lanes like this one, separated from the main road, are safer. And the bigger the distance to exhaust pipes, the less ultrafine particles the cyclists inhale. Florine is approaching a red light. Cyclists in Amsterdam are known for their impatience, but being a responsible mum, she will honorably wait for the traffic light to turn green. There you go. There's another large coach coming up there, a white one. We looked up its number plate in the National Register and found out that it has a new type of soot filter. The purple graph is not going up as Florine passes the idling bus. The soot filter obviously helps. Great, why can't we just have more of that? Ah, there goes a nasty little diesel van, most likely causing this peak in the chart. Actually, it would have an enormous impact if the dirtiest cars would be prohibited from entering the city. So-called low-emission zones are a practical way to make this happen. In Berlin, for example, the air pollution decreased immensely after the dirtiest cars were no longer allowed to drive around town. By the way, cyclists and pedestrians aren't the only ones inhaling the bad air. When you're in a car or on a motorcycle, it's often even worse. 
by filming typical cycling routes, tracking GPS positions and taking air measurements simultaneously, we can make the invisible pollution visible. Because there's an urgent need to reduce air pollution in our cities, our governments need to set effective limits for ultrafine particulates and soot levels in the air we breathe. Clear European and national regulations are needed as a basis for strong local policies. Because really, we can't just hold our breath, you know.